And welcome to another show. Let's talk uh, about strengthening company culture amid COVID-19. We're going to talk about how to build a culture of hope and resilience during times of crisis. My special guest will be Eric Castro. He's co-founder of Bankers Healthcare Group. You know, businesses of all sizes are working hard to survive amidst a global pandemic and economic crisis. But there is a silver lining. And now is a great time to examine company culture and people's ability to adapt, to stay focused, and to perform. While the landscape might feel challenging, with a fresh perspective, it doesn't have to be. As I said, my special guest is Eric Castro, co-founder of Bankers Healthcare Group. Welcome, Eric. Thanks, Mark. Great to be here. Define the type of culture you currently have relative to the type you want and work on developing it. How do you go about that? Well, I guess uh, I think the first thing you have to do, Mark, it's a great question, um, you know, is really understand what culture is and what culture isn't. I think uh, in a lot of... um, 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 people's perspective. Culture is not something that you can buy. It's not something that you can put on a balance sheet. It's really hard to kind of quantify in certain aspects of how you're looking for it. But mm-hmm. when you're around it, you can smell it, you can see it, you can hear it. And it's something that just doesn't show up, like I said, from one minute to the next. It's something that grows. And I think, um, you know, putting that in perspective is important. And then really understanding, you know, what drives that culture, you know, what principles, what values, you know, what certain traditions that you guys do on a regular basis that kind of make it whether it's a winning culture here at BHG, Bankers Healthcare Group, we consider, you know, what we call a winning culture. It's a very competitive type of um, environment, but at the same time, you know, very humbling. You know, mm-hmm. you know, we do certain things that, you know, maybe other companies do, maybe they don't, but it's important to us. And it seems to be getting us what we're looking for when it comes to, you know, not only growing, but just finding, you know, success and in, in, in the wins that we're looking for as far as business is concerned. Well, in a time of uncertainty, uh, perspective is key. Now, we can uh, choose, I guess, to be consumed by the negativity of the situation or uncover the positive. What performance uh, in an extreme situation can you reveal about your future? Um, you know, I think... About your um, culture. You know, yeah. one of the things that... Yeah, one of the things that I think um, are important is to kind of really understand the uncertain nature of the times today. You know, when you're talking about the crisis... You know, one of the things that you really, you know, start understanding is, you know, the uncertainty of it. You know, there's so many different dynamics going on. This thing changes its face every week, every day, every hour, every month. And with the amount of information and news that you're hearing, it's hard to put it all together. And so I think it's important really to embrace that uncertainty and really understand that you need to take it one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. And it's not just, you know, something that you do for yourself. It's something that you do for your company. And I think that one of the things that you really need to do is embrace, you know, the uncertainty and really develop a culture that can, you know, kind of, you know, embrace that idea. Because if not, I think uh, you're going to have a rough time getting through, you know, what most businesses are going to need in order to be successful in the future, which is really an agile type of approach to what happens and the opportunities that they represent. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's easy to be negative at the moment. I'm speaking with Eric Castro, co-founders of Bankers Healthcare Group. Let me ask you this. You say build resilience one leader at a time, starting with yourself. What do you mean by that? You know, most people don't realize before you can lead others, you got to lead yourself. And resilience, again, doesn't show up. But resilience is like a muscle. It's something that you establish and you build by getting knocked down and getting back up. The true entrepreneurs... Um, you know, characteristics, you know, the, the archetype that an entrepreneur is, is somebody that can get knocked down. And, and there's no question in life, everybody's going to get knocked down. The only question is whether you're going to get up or not. And how many times you're going to get up. That's the resilience. And I think that in today's marketplace, not only do you have to be dynamic and, and, and agile, but you also have to be resilient. You have to be able to kind of take the punches and keep going. And I think that those are really the fundamental principles that not only got us through 2001's, um, 9-11 crisis, but also the recession in 2009, and also what we're dealing with today in the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, it just feels endless, doesn't it? I mean, it's an incredible time we live in. It sure does. It's kind of like a you know rabbit hole. You take two steps forward, and you have to take three back. <laughs> and little by little, and you gotta, you know, it's all in the inches and the days. Well, as the co-founder of a company that has survived economic challenges over the years, Tell us about that and how it's prepared you for the current pandemic. 
you know, one of the things that we learned early on in some of the earlier crises was that, you know, like I said earlier, just, you know, really embracing the uncertainty and adapting um, to an agile type of approach to things on a day-to-day basis. And the second thing is really just, you know, to create a mindset throughout the actual culture that is one of resilience, you know, always putting in a hundred percent, you know, getting out there, getting up every day, you know, working with your team, so on and so forth. The other thing is just the ability to over communicate to be able to communicate as a team. And I think the crisis, you know, the pandemic or any other crisis is just like any other. And at the end of the day, you should monetize it. You should use it. You should embrace it because it's an opportunity to bring your team together to really define what your culture really is and what it isn't. And at the end of the day, what it actually strives for is it looking to win or is it just looking to survive mm. is a quick example well how can business owners listening now to this evaluate uh, their culture's resiliency and ability to adapt i mean is there a formula to start doing um i don't know if there's a formula but i think that there are some key principles that they should follow i think the first one is just looking in the mirror and making sure that you're you're walking the walk. You can't sit out there and expect the culture to be developed if you're not actually driving it. And that's what the leader does. He creates that standard. Number two, you know, are you kind of getting the results you're looking for? I mean, at the end of the day, I try to keep it very specific. Are you there? You're either effective or you're not effective. And if you're not effective, it doesn't mean it's a failure. It just means that there's opportunity there and improving on what you need to do to be effective. And then there's so many other areas specifically to trust because this is an opportunity where a lot of people are vulnerable. They're scared. Mm. There's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. And at the end of the day, it creates trust. And you should leverage that opportunity to be able to bring your team together and develop a tighter culture, a more defined culture. So in what ways can business owners improve their company culture at this time? I mean, everybody's at home just about, you know? Sure. Yeah, no, it's extremely difficult. You know, one area that a lot of people take uh, for granted is just, general communication. It's not just at the business level. I mean, communicating your day-to-day and making sure that the left hand knows what the right hand thing is one thing, but above and beyond that, what about the communication when it comes to empathy and, and relating to others and making sure that you're addressing other things that are important to those individuals? Those things, the little things are what mean a lot to people. And I think that that is a lot of people's misnormal that doesn't matter. It does matter. So even though you're at home and you're limited on your mobility, the reality is picking up the phone, getting on Zoom or whatever the case might be, and just reaching out to say hi, not necessarily, are you done with that yet? And I think a lot of people take that for granted, and that develops a certain level of um, um, appreciation and respect for everybody. And that's one way, just as an example, on how you can develop and continue to improve your culture, even in these times. Yeah, that makes sense, reaching out and communicating. and Yeah, it's just not the same, I know, as around the water cooler, but uh, it's better than nothing, isn't it? Um, tell me this. What, oh, it sure is. You know, why, <laughs> why is investing in new talent and instilling hope, why is that an essential tool in changing company culture? I think it's important, you know, you know, considering that there's you know, I don't know, 35 to 40 million Americans unemployed, there's a tremendous amount of talent and opportunity out there. And, and if you're not really just confronting some of the opportunities or challenges that you're dealing with right now within your own business, in essence, if you're not injecting new blood, um, and if you're not, it's basically you're not enabling the business or the culture to grow and evolve. You know, staying static in this type of market base, especially once you've passed the, you know, the critical area, it, 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 you know, so staying static in the business today is a death sentence. And I think it's important for people to come to terms with that. That's how a company evolves, by getting out there and really injecting new blood and really come to terms with what you currently have. I know that's not easy, but it's mandatory. And then the other piece is just hope. And I think most people don't realize that you can really break that down. And, and when you start realizing what you really have going on in your life, whether it's the silver lining you want to look at, whether you just got up this morning or whether you have the opportunity to be able to kind of do the things that a lot of people can't do, there's always a positive aspect of it. You just got to make sure you focus on it. And you know, the other thing, too, is celebrate the, the little wins, whether mm-hmm. that's you know, accomplishing, getting through the day, or just doing the things that you need to do, whether it's making payroll, whether it's just, you know, yeah, getting it done at the end of the day. So I think that's important too. Well, I can tell you now, Eric, you've motivated me today. I'll give you that. <laughs> you, you have a deep passion. Well, I appreciate for, that, Mark. Well, you do. I mean, you have a deep passion for effective leadership and execution, obviously. I mean, you are a veteran of the U.S. Marine Corps, so uh, you quickly learn the importance of a strong leader to guide a motivated group, let's face it, towards uh, significant accomplishments, shall we say. Um, the website for people to um, follow you up on now is uh, what? BankersHealthCareGroup.com. Is that right? 
Yeah, that's correct. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Just search Eric Castro with Bankers Healthcare Group. And if you have any listeners, you know, that are licensed professionals looking for some unsecured working capital, you can, they can also go to bankershealthcaregroup.com and you know, most likely find a solution there. But other than that, though, I think uh, um, this has been great, uh, Mark. I really appreciate it. You're most welcome. And as I said, you're a great motivator. I think you'd be good on the speaking tour, my friend. You should look into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mark. That means a lot, but thanks for making it easy. You're welcome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Castro, founder, co-founder of a company that has survived economic challenges over the years with some very good advice for us all in business. Uh, thinking of getting into business, don't let this COVID-19 stop you or, you know, keep you in negativity. Keep positive because we're all going to break through it. I trust you enjoyed that. I'll be back with uh, another episode, another podcast on The Mark Bishop Show soon.